little Thursday action coming your way here at beautiful Gulfstream Park West. In fact, day 23, November 1st. Can you believe it? Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blewett, good to have you with us, everybody, as we get closer to the uh, Breeders' Cup extravaganza. Breeders' Cup 35 tomorrow and Saturday at Churchill Downs. And boy, that Rainbow Six, my friend. This GPW playing crowd has really got that bet dialed in. Yeah, they are to you're absolutely right. Dialed in. I think they've hit it to like the last three or five days or something like that like that it's amazing and you know what great payoff you say well there's no carryover still great payoff so uh you know fun to play we'll be doing it again today absolutely a, a rainbow six ticket coming your way from mr nicoletti right next to me we survived halloween hope everybody had a great uh, maybe trick-or-treating session or maybe you won some money here at gulfstream park west and we'll focus in of course not only on thursday's eight race action but the friday card here at GPW and beyond, mainly the fact that over at Gulfstream Park, our state-of-the-art simulcasting center in Silks will open both Friday and Saturday for the Breeders' Cup at 10 a.m., so there's no finer place to watch the ponies run, especially on a big day like the Breeders' Cup, big weekend, than over at Silks. Yeah, Silks is it's just set up perfectly for watching uh, simulcast. you got TVs all over the place and a lot of fun, and uh, uh, certainly uh, we're going to be here at Gulfstream Park West, and uh, we're going to try and make money from both ends here. You got that right, my friend, and do keep in mind there is advanced wagering available on the quote-unquote traditional Breeders' Cup Saturday card on Friday, November second whether you're playing over at Gulfstream Park or you're on Express Bet do keep in mind you can advance wager on the Breeders Cup Saturday action and we've got some rooting interest both on Friday and Saturday that have more of a South Florida local flair in fact I love seeing Tyler Gaffleone getting the mount on Stormy and Brace for Kathleen O'Connell Saturday in the Philly and Mare Sprint, but we have a combined four horses who are really South Florida runners through and through running in the two-day event. Well, no other one like uh, the one and only Gunavera is going to be given another go in the Classic, and you see that'll be Saturday about a quarter to six and thereabouts, and uh, Irad Ortiz Jr. will be in the saddle. I like well-defined with Mike Smith, and that is another one from Kathleen O'Connell. That is tomorrow. I'm betting that horse. Yeah, Kathleen's got a 20-to-1 morning line uh, long shot there in the BC Juvenile. That'll be the last race on their two-year-old centric Friday card, and well-defined came out of his big win, a 91 buyer uh, over at Gulfstream Park in late September. Uh, no worse for the wear. In fact, looked very, very well within himself, uh, galloping in the days before he hopped on a van and shipped north and west to Louisville, Kentucky. Here he is. This is over at Gulfstream Park, right here at Gulfstream Park West, uh, just going through his daily morning exercise. Uh, Kathleen had told me that this horse was very fit, very fast, doing very well. She saw no need to really breeze this horse other than some strong gallops here over the main. Well, that exercise rider looks about as big as me almost <laughs> in there, so she'll certainly be uh, feeling good when she gets that light jockey on there, Mike Smith, on, her, yeah. on, her, on his back. So, uh, yeah, that's the one I like. Of, of those horses we just showed besides others, that's the one I like. All right, sounds good. Mike Smith, Kathleen O'Connell running two in the Breeders' Cup. Now, as far as the carryover situation, we've got shutouts in just about every category. Of course, the uh, 50 cent early five gets underway in about an hour, give or take around 1.20 p.m. Race number three is sort of a one-two punch. It's our first high five on the afternoon and the opening of a new Rainbow Six as we start a new chapter. Well, the key word there is new. They keep mm -hmm. nailing this thing, and then we're going to end the day, of course, with a final pick, a four, five of the afternoon with the 50 cent uh, tag on it. So uh, a lot of fun to bet that. We'll see how this race day plays out with, with the fast main track. And if you're not aware, we're off the turf this afternoon. Yeah, fingers crossed we'll be back on the uh, grass tomorrow. Safety's got to come first. I mean, it's as simple as that for these riders and these horses. So no turf today on this 1st of November. 2018, if you can believe it, at GPW. And my early pick five ticket, we're off and running. I'm three deep in the first race. You will get more than one to five, or at least I hope so, on the number four Beach Girl, who I do like to win the opening race today for trainer Leon Minot, but I respect Ronnie's press Guile shipper, and I also think towards the outside the, the uh, nine horse, Paula, has a, uh, a decent little chance there for trainer Larry Pilati and jockey Miguel Vasquez. The single, though, taking a shot, my friend, in race three. The more I look, and you don't have this horse, <laughs> one, two, three, the one tri-delta bay way out of 
her element in her two races on the dirt so far. I think she's dirtied up, and she's a real blew it sneak play today. I like her in the third. I'm loving that. I like when you got those sneak plays, so we'll see how it <laughs> plays out, and you have uh, you have them single, which is even better. Yeah, going to take a little shot, and, and, and I constructed this early pick five with the surface switch around the uh, Take Charge Indy Philly for trainer Fernando Abreu. Leading trainer Marcus Vitale and Armando De La Serta have the two runners that both have speed in the fourth race, and uh, wrapping things up, the fifth race is the feature race on the card today. It's a good race. Originally scheduled for turf but the main players that's the good thing about today's fifth ronnie the main players who were posted towards the inside everybody stayed in yeah and i think that dominance it didn't matter what surface that one ran that of course from the jonathan thomas bond we are in total agreement just about hmm. except in race three we're totally different there so we'll see how that plays out a lot of fun today absolutely now beach girl uh starting for trainer leon minot will likely be uh, favored by race time in about 60 minutes or so as this horse is just a, a major player has speed dropping down you get the leading rider at a barn that's been a little hot and cold, per se, but I do like the fact that this is an outfit that picked up a, a couple of wins here last week at Gulfstream West. I'm going to take the four Beach Girl over a Presque Isle down shipper here for trainer uh, Teresa Connolly, who you like. Yeah, this one debuting locally for Teresa after a pair of really solid sprint efforts uh, on the Presque Isle synthetic surface, including that recent second place finish that was going three quarters of a mile against this level of opposition. Of course, there's guesswork here, how this horse will handle the main track. I remember Teresa coming in last year, and the horses ran okay, so I'm thinking maybe I, I can maybe beat Beach Girl on the ticket for all the reasons you just mentioned, and the nine horse on the outside, dropping a notch, followed that 12-5 maiden win, comes back, finished third against 16 condition claimers. Looks like a good spot. Uh, so off the turf for race number one, but the main track, don't forget, very fast. Yeah, very fast, no <laughs> doubt about that. It is dry here in Miami Gardens. As we move on to, the, uh, to race number two, a uh, six and a half furlong, two-year-old $16,000 claiming race in which you and I will take a uh, cold five horse to win this race. And look, the drop in class, you talk about just kind of you know, aiming for the stratosphere in the last couple of races with the number five organic Jenny and this Ridgling by Brethren quite simply is just taking a much needed but very realistic drop in into the claiming ranks. Yeah, plunge into the 16 level after following his uh, maiden victory back in July at the $35,000 level. He's out of the money. That's in a $125,000 proud, proud man on the turf. And then he comes back and tries the $400,000 in reality. This is the spot for organic. Jenny, uh, flat out flying in second for me. We almost have the same uh, super up there, and I thought those are the logical players behind Organic Jenny. And that's one of the neat little uh, maybe subtext to this early double today. You've got the uh, horse Ronnie likes from Presque Isle in off a win in the first race today. What do you do with the number two flat out flying, who I've got third, you've got second, a horse that is coming in from Belterra Park. We don't see many of these Ohio shippers, maybe outside of a Luch per se, when mm -hmm. he's shipping to South Florida. Florida, but this horse, just a straight-up trainer change, the same owner who ran this horse at Belterra, uh, will uh, will campaign this horse today for trainer David Fox. Beat very little, but anytime you're going first time out for Mr. David Fox, I think you've got to you've got to get some serious consideration. And that was my thought process. I mean, I, I certainly thought if, if almost came to putting this one on top, except for the huge drop in Organic Jenny. And the only reason I'm doing it, same thing I wrote in my analysis, uh, it's basically an unknown quantity. Yeah. We're going to see how this horse runs today. And the old San Diego Slugger in third. All right. A, a, a rise up, I should say, for <laughs> San Diego Slugger. Baseball's done. Red Sox uh, World Series champs again as they work on their, their little dynasty. And we'll take a little time out. Not a good move for me to talk about baseball <laughs> because I know nothing. But I do know we've got Ronnie's Rainbow Six coming up after this quick break here on GPW Today. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Set for another Friday afternoon, November 2nd. Can you believe it? Where has the year gone? But with a new Friday comes the latest round of the 12% Jake Astronic 5. 
Happy Breeders' Cup weekend, by the way. But it's all about the Stronic 5. Free PPs over at GulfstreamPark.com, and you're going to need them. A very tough sequence. Our all-star ticket doesn't have any singles. It clocks in at 72 bucks. Trips all across the country. Best of luck in the November 2nd Stronic 5. You're going to need those free PPs for the Stronic 5 tomorrow afternoon, just that 12% takeout. Jason and Ronnie catching up with you again here on our live edition of the Handicapping Show. That is a fun wager, per se, but a very difficult one tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, we've got that. Of course, you know it's the Breeders' Cup weekend, so we need to hit this Rainbow Six because we're going to need a lot of money over the weekend, especially in, in that the Stronic 5 tomorrow, which uh, uh, I had part of it in there. And the race they used at, at Gulfstream, you see it there right now with leg be in this thing was not an easy race. I got a 12 to 1 shot in there on top, but I went and put the morning line favorite. I think that's a tough race. Really tough race, and in fact, a couple of races, in fact, a doubleheader as it stands out there at Santa Anita. Their closing weekend card, I read their uh, Rainbow Six jackpot, has been on hit or not hit over the last a few weeks. Uh, they figure around $2 million give or take, so <laughs> it is a big weekend as far as the gargantuan, uh, high-prized multi-race wagers go and the Stronic 5, no exception to the rule, will uh, we'll get underway a little before 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon and five races in less than an hour. You can't beat that nonstop freight train of action. Now, this third race, Ronnie, has my early pick five single. Horse, you don't have one, two, three. I think you may have missed the one try Delta Bay, and you may want to add this horse to your Rainbow Six. Yeah, you'll see my ticket. I did have picked that horse. I looked, went back and looked during the break to see if I had it. I have it in fourth. And I wanted coverage in the two races that were off deserve. One being race number three. So I went three deep. And the other one being race number five. I went three deep in there. Now scroll down. My single today is nine to two on the morning line. And that is the number five House of Commons. This one uh, first off the claim by Bobby DeBona. Ran at Keeneland. Finished third behind a repeat winner. That's where I, I had in the last race. Another one off the turf. I wanted coverage. So I went four deep. $28.80. So Mr. DeBona is my man today. I need him to get that single through. And I will certainly look at your number one horse when you talk about it now. I actually picked it fourth, and I was looking down. Got a shot. Has a shot. I'm thinking because the, quite simply in this uh, three and up Philly mare off the turf, $10,000 maiden claimer, you've got a horse who's run twice on the dirt. Both in special weight company was a big price for a guy who does not crank up his layoff horses or the few firsters that he has or has had over the years in uh, Fernando Abreu. And that second start against special weight company back in late August, way, way, way too far for this filly at the one mile distance. I am going into this thinking this is a classic case in a pretty soft off the turf, low level maiden claimer that this take charge in the filly is quite simply dirtied up and she may have a little more ability than you you might get at first blush on paper. Yeah, I'm looking back now, and you make a good point on there. So uh, maybe I do go four deep in there, and uh, we basically have the same Supra, just totally reversed. Mm -hmm. I did go with the number five, Sunshine Smiles. who's turning back five furlongs, went up, set the pace, tired late uh, after, you know, finishing third against Simba. That was going six furlongs on the main track. So staying on the main track, it's Efren Loza Jr. Really respect what he does, and I think the move to the main track is going to really uh, be okay for this horse. Romero Marage will be in the saddle. Magic Maker and drinks on Maggie. I'm still trying to find this Maggie to get mm. me a drink here. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, uh, rush hour traffic getting out of the uh, track yesterday at Gulfstream West. You uh, you better you better track down Maggie because <laughs> I think it took you well over an hour to get back to Weston, right? It did, and I am not going to be doing that today. I'm going to stick around. So if anybody uh, comes over to Gulfstream Park West, hang out with me outside. Yeah. <laughs> you got the simulcast. You fire up that Express Bet app on your uh, smartphone. There, you're good to go. Let's move on to uh, race number four, shall we? As we go the two turns here, scheduled dirt race. As we jump start and springboard into the opening leg of the late pick five, we've got some two-year-old 20K maiden claimers using the same few horses that I have in the overlapping races in the early sequence. That being the two and seven, one of the uh, horses in the first leg for leading trainer Marcus Vitale and the uh, two inside speeds, including dominance for Jonathan Thomas in race number five. Now things 
get a little interesting as we move on to race number six. And I am a fan. I don't know about the nine to two, but I think the four, my point exactly, may be favored in that race or certainly co-favored with the seven, Alerstra. And I like drop downs in that one. My single, by the way, Ronnie, you've got your Bob the Bona horse who I used off the claim because I respect the job that he does in the seven. But my single... I don't know about Miss Lamborghini, and <laughs> with all due respect, you know, maybe uh, Miss Ford Pinto. <laughs> and we love Miss Lamborghini because she's a hard trier. Mm. She runs back to that off the turf race. She's got, what was that, back Labor Day weekend going five eights over at Gulfstream mm. in the slop. I mean, they won't know which way she went. Yeah, I mean, when I redid the worst race, I put Miss Lamborghini right on top and uh, proper princess love flu. But I, I just wasn't as sold, so I went four deep in there. But a good single in nonetheless. But uh, this uh, first leg, we're in total agreement with the two and the seven in here, I believe. And they both have speed. That's the thing with the Deuce Cosmic Shift in this 20K two-year-old maiden claimer and the seven Guerin, who is a uh, stretch out and a drop down. Both these horses should be up in the game. And man, I tried to come up with the scenario where they hooked up and maybe they took themselves out of the race trying to stay this two-turn mile. In the end, though, I think there's a good chance they're just going to run one two around the racetrack. You know, in Cosmic Shift, it's dropping to the 20 level, so I looked this stat up uh, for, as Jason said, leading trainer Marcus Vitale. Horses going turf to dirt with a 50% drop in claiming price. He's 4 for 11, 36%, 45% in the money, and a $2.21 return of investment. Gearing in second, and I closed it out with the five in there. White Cap Bay is dropping. It was actually in the $200,000 affirmed. I thought with the drop, it would help this horse. Sounds good. Let's move on to the uh, fifth race here. Featured fifth on this off the turf of Thursday here, November 1st at GPW. Three and up Phillies and Mares in this open company allowance optional claimer. Again, we'll go five eights on the uh, main track. And what do we get from the inside horses? Mainly our happy ending. The two dominants who we both picked and the three frittata. What concerns me to an extent in liking our happy ending and dominance is the pace of this race could be pretty fast. There's a good chance all three of these fillies hook up a stride or two out of the starting gate. You know, Dominance uh, is a daughter of violence in debut locally first start. She used her speed. She defeated a pair of next out winners in a six furlong sprint at Belmont. Look at that first quarter. This one is this lightning fast sophomore and our happy ending, no slouch yeah. in the speed department. So you got to hope that it doesn't happen. And maybe first appeal that stayed in for Linda Rice sits that trip behind there. I thought Linda Rice horse might scratch, but not and might be the idea for this horse to sit off that what I we both see as a really fast pace. Yeah, that is the, I think the biggest subplot in this race is what happens with Frittata who won't be as short in the price department as Dominance or Our Happy Ending but all these Phillies like to really run and gun and mix it up early and for Linda Rice I mean this is really for her uncharted territory running horses this early in the season at GPW. In fact, she's only she hasn't run any horses over the last five seasons at Gulfstream West and has only had, I looked it up, three Gulfstream Park starters. So we say the more the merrier. Come on down. We got room for everybody. This leads me to believe, my friend, that she'll be uh, snowbirding and having a stable based uh, at Gulfstream or Palm Meadows, which is great. Which she's had in the past for years and years and then, like you said, backed off a little bit. So yeah. we'll see if Linda's coming back down now. I'll take a look at I'm going to take a look at the stall list when we get a chance to see how many stalls yeah, she sounds have. good. Beautiful. Snowbirds are coming. A couple of stakes on the uh, Saturday card. Breeders' Cup Saturday here at Gulfstream West, Jason Service, Christoph Kamat, Mike Maker, Tim Hills, Todd Pletcher. Good stuff there. Let's move on to race number six. We got some 12-5 uh, claimers ready to go on the main. And I said to you earlier today, who do you who did you pick in the six? Did I misread the race? And sure enough, we both like the two drop downs. And again, I, I don't know about four and a half on the four, my point exactly to me off that race two back this horse is going to take a ton of dough and is arguably the horse to beat because that narrow third in that off the turf race in early September over at Gulfstream Park is an effort that unless somebody really runs in this race is probably good enough to beat these. And yeah, you hear me telling you all the time my favorite angle, speed on the grass, turning back to seven furlongs, and that's exactly what this horse is doing for Elizabeth Dobles. Paco Lopez, a great day yesterday, winning races in bunches. Awful lot to like about that horse, but I can understand the Lustra 
you know, being on everybody's ticket. Well, another drop down in class, and here is this uh, horse who, in fact, is going turf to dirt, just like my point exactly. And I get Terry Pompey just taking a shot off this win. Two starts back for this Colt by Gone Astray. This is a race back in uh, the middle of August and beat a comparable field to an extent. I'd say from top to bottom, this was an easier field and group than what he faces today with the presence of my point exactly and even a horse like the three Aristelles. But the bottom line is this is a Colt who is well spotted. There's plenty of intention here, and just fooling around with some of the statistics of late for trader Terry Pompey, last three months, and this goes for everywhere, but she mostly runs in South Florida, she's eight for her last 22. That's 36% as far as the winning strike rate. Yeah, and that race was the second uh, part of a two-race win streak and then tried the turf, like you said mm -hmm. last time out. Certainly looks much better in the dirt. Yeah, we've been watching uh, Terry all summer long, and everybody, you know, jokes, especially my cameraman, Dennis, if it's uh, Terry Pompey, you're going to see me putting his horse somewhere on the ticket. Definitely. So we'll see how that plays out. And you know why? She deserves to be on the ticket. No, very good trainer for sure, Miguel Vasquez, from an outside post. We like the drop-downs. 4774 in race number six. Moving on to race number seven. These are thirty to twenty-five thousand dollar three and up claimers. They will sprint. And this, as far as the dirt races go today, this isn't the technical feature, but I'd say from inside to outside, this might be the toughest race on the card, even though you and I and it, you know what? It's a tough race between mid-pack and outside, from the five house of commons out to the number seven for the Gipper with a little drop down Empire Power, the six in the mix. What do you like about House of Commons? Was this your best bet today? Yes, it is. Move to the Bobby de Bonobon after the claim. Dual for lead, faded to finish third behind that repeat winner called Strolling. It was a 22 lifetime claimer at Keeneland. Let's show you stat on Mr. Bobby de Bona. First after the claim, sprints on the dirt. He's seven for 26, 27 percent. He's in the money 57 percent. 50% of the time, excuse me, $2 and two return of investment. Just like this angle today, coming from Keeneland, I understand for the Gipper, you know, running behind the horse, that best candy that was just winning races in bunches at the time, actually came back on Sunday or Saturday and didn't run that well, but yeah. uh, I, I think for the Gipper and House of Commons, the two to beat, but I wanted to f use a single thing in the Rainbow Six. This was my best bet, so I'm hanging my hat there. And for the Gipper, the seven for Armando, seemed to start to uh, put things together. It took him a while, but he was good breaking his maiden in late August for 40, and I like that Armando then stepped him up and didn't run him for a tag, and he ran okay in late September against Trev and Star Wancho. I'm giving him a major excuse, not only running into a horse that was winning his fourth straight at the time back on the 4th of October in the best candy. I don't think for the Gipper like the wet track here in Miami Gardens whatsoever. Yeah, and you get Paco Lopez this afternoon. So those are the two logical horses in there. I close it out with powerful Venezuela. You have in fourth. You got the six. Why have we ever our last uh, two flip flop there? But I just thought there was a logical two in there. Definitely good trainers from Barboza with the four powerful Venezuela. The boat off the claim. Sano de la Cerda and even Dave Braddy on the outside with the eight discreet heat. Good seventh race on tap. And then we come Come down to Miss Lamborghini, who's going to be favored, and unbeknownst to me, and I guess everybody, it's a call 398. Why even look at the PPs? It's Miss Lamborghini over the nine proper princess and the eight love flute. But I mean, all kidding aside, if, and maybe this is the, the caveat with Miss Lamborghini, if she's able to replicate a sloppy track win three back on the dirt, she's likely going to win, but she's not getting a sloppy track today. No, she's shifting. At least we hope not. <laughs> she's shifting back to the main track after dueling for lead, finishing third. That was those open claimers going five on the turf. She's the one to beat, I believe, on the main track today. Proper Princess. Interesting. Ten for 15 in the money on the fast track. I'll be with only that one victory. Uh, seven second place finishes. So I put her in second today. The drop to the 12-5 level is certainly another plus. All right. Love Fluke going off a, a trainer change for a Maddie Racing over to Rashawn Creek. He does a good job. Our buddy Rashawn doesn't run that many horses, but a good trainer there with a little Sammy Camacho as we take a little time out here on this live edition, November 1st of Gulfstream Park West today. And in a few moments, we'll turn it on over to track announcer Pete Aiello for much more. most anticipated thoroughbred racing events of the year returns. The third annual Pegasus World Cup Invitational at Gulfstream Park in South Florida. 
competition from around the world with a $16 million purse split between two grade one races. On the dirt and on the turf. Experience the incredible fashion, spectacular world-class service and entertainment, and the unrivaled adrenaline of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. Saturday, January 26th at Gulfstream Park. Get your tickets now at PegasusWorldCup.com.